Let's now talk about hacking web servers. Not so much web apps, that's the topic for another module, but hacking web servers. So in hacking web servers, let's talk about our objectives here. You'll understand some web server concepts and attacks and attack methodology, the tools, the countermeasures, patch management, uh, security tools, and pen testing. So here's what we're going to cover. We'll talk about the concepts and the attacks. Uh, we'll talk about the methodology and the attack tools, the attack countermeasures, the patch management, the security tools, and the pen testing in this order. So starting with web server concepts. Web servers are interesting beasts because a web server is usually a dedicated machine or dedicated virtual machine that's running a web service. And of course, there are many web services, Apache, IIS, Jinx, uh, a variety of them. Uh, so this is a service running on an operating system on a box. And the service is interacting constantly with loads and loads, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of users, either internally or from the general public. And that server service will often have web applications that do specific things. Long gone are the days of just a static web page. So a web server is software or hardware or combination that hosts websites. And attackers can attack vulnerabilities and configuration errors in the software. And we're talking about network level and operating system level attacks. Servers are more vulnerable because they're less secure and easily accessible via the internet. They're meant to face the internet. That's their problem. So web servers have just sort of a hierarchy here. You've got um, web apps and possibly third-party components. And you probably have a database. I mean, usually web servers keep track of something, but they, they, they might have a, a built-in database, but typically the database is a whole separate server, Oracle, MySQL, MSQL, who knows. Then you've got the web server service itself, Apache, Microsoft. And then you've got the operating system. And then you've got the box and the network and any security that you might have here, intrusion protection, intrusion detection. So like there's a whole sort of area. And the web server is just one part of one slice of this big old layered cake. But you could possibly attack a web server at any of these layers. So now, why is it or how is it that they're compromised? Well, we didn't set proper permissions on the files or the directories. We left defaults during the install. We have services that the web server frankly doesn't need, like it doesn't need to also be a file and print server. There might be conflicts with security due to business ease of use. You know, security is always a fight between security and everything else, including ease of use. Maybe we just don't have a good policy. Maybe we don't have good procedures. We don't have good maintenance. Maybe we have improper authentication for external systems. Maybe we've left default accounts that have no or default passwords. Maybe we are um, keeping unnecessary files lying around that could also lead to compromise. Sample files, defaults, or backups that are not being stored properly or deleted properly. Maybe the operating system, maybe the web server, maybe the network is misconfigured. Maybe there are bugs in any of these. Maybe the certificates that we have or the encryption settings we have are not configured properly. Maybe um, debugging functions which give away too much information are uh, accessible. And maybe we're using just self-signed certificates that are not considered trusted. So what happens when a web server is attacked? We could have a compromise of accounts or a compromise of users' data. We could have the website get defaced. The website could be used as a jump point to launch secondary attacks. It uh, could give root or administrator access to other apps, other servers. Um, we have the potential for theft of data or tampering with the data. Here's sort of the architecture of a classic, what we call LAMP stack. Um, when you install sort of an open source web server, it can come with a database server, 
um, some email capabilities, some applications, a web server. And so this is sort of like a classic thing here. So you can see that the web server itself is this Apache service. And let me just zoom in a bit so you can see it better. So the web server itself is Apache. And so that we can run uh, web apps, we probably have PHP, which allows us to uh, run different applications. And we might have other things. We might have Apache also uh, talk to or use email. And the web apps are probably going to talk to some kind of database. So you've got all these moving parts, not just the web server itself. And then you've got the file system of the operating system that is maintaining like HTML and JavaScript and PHP pages and text pages and PDFs and spreadsheets and, and images like PNGs and, and JPEGs and GIFs and um, uh, like, um, like, uh, like sound and video images, SWIFTs and MP3s and MP4s. And then you've got all these people on the internet from normal users out in the internet to the administrator of this website to hackers like us, and, but these are the folks with malicious intent, all making their connections through the internet to try to use or attack these services. Here's IIS. Now IIS, um, this is of course Microsoft's version of a web server. And uh, so they have uh, application pools and something called service host exe. So if we zoom in just a little bit here, you've got the web server with its core components and it's got little modules that do things like authentication and certificate mapping and providing default documents and caching HTTP and, and providing errors and logging. Um, with Microsoft, anytime some process needs to get on a network, it usually is helped by a process called service host exe. And uh, so if you look in task manager on a Microsoft machine, and if this machine is doing a bunch of different things on a network, you might see a lot of service host exes here that are assisting the service. In this case, it's assisting the uh, www service, the World Wide Web service. And then you'll have maybe other applications and you'll have configurations and um, you'll have applications. And what Microsoft does is they run applications in what's called an app pool where uh, a bunch of apps share resources. They sh mostly share uh, um, policy and authentication of uh, credentials and, pr and particularly um, things like memory. And so uh, then you can have your application do different things like forms or do other kinds of uh, things. And so then clients or hackers or administrators are connecting through across the internet, talking to Microsoft's HTTP protocol stack, which is a driver, HTTP.sys, to talk to these components. So that is starting basic web server concepts.